What's up, Greg? So if you recall a few months ago, I made a video about this guy. He's the Liver King, a man who eats balls and works out so hard he cries. <laughs> And a little while after I made that video, I noticed that if you go to DM him on Instagram, it gives you a bunch of options of things you can send him. And I'd never seen this before on Instagram, so on a whim, I just hit the I need recipes for liver please button, which I feel like is an extremely desperate sounding message. I don't know why it needs, has to sound so dire. And moments later, I was sent like an automated response. But then, to my surprise, I was sent a very personal response from the liver king himself. He gave me beef liver recipes, bone marrow recipes. He thanked me for the video I made about him. He offered to send me some meat for free for me to try. But most importantly, he called me Primal Danny and said he was tribe, which means he's here for me if I need anything. I've never been so flattered in my goddamn life. This is like one of the nicest interactions I've ever had with anybody I've ever made a video about. So I got to thinking, you know, Maybe I was a little hard on the guy. And to make up for it, why don't I walk a mile in his shoes? Or, oh, he doesn't wear shoes? Why don't I walk a mile in his chains? And try to live one whole day as the liver king. I'm gonna do what he does, eat what he eats, and try to abide by the nine ancestral tenets that he follows, which he says are to honor our ancestors. Also, to truly put the liver king's lifestyle through its paces, I'm going to be periodically consulting a doctor. This is Dr. Renal Patel. She's actually seen my video about the liver king, and she said it was interesting. Interesting. And hopefully with her help, I will not die. The first tenet I had to tackle was sleep. The liver king makes a big deal about getting a good quality sleep on his website, which is kind of ironic because he and his family all sleep on hardwood in bed. So just like any sensible caveman would do, I drove my Flintstones car to Home Depot, or, sorry, Cave Depot, and found myself a nice cozy bed to lay my weary caveman head. Aw, oh, look how cozy I am there. Take me back, dude, god damn. Yeah, this is definitely gonna be the worst part of the video, for sure. It was not. Thank you for shopping at the Cave Depot. The Liver King has gone to incredible lengths to make sure he's protected from radio signals while he sleeps. He's got special curtains, special paint on his walls, and even a little baggie for his phone. But being the foolish modern man that I am, I don't have any of those things. And I'm terrified. Am I gonna die tonight? So I asked him what I could do to protect myself from the invisible poison floating through my home. Shield yourself from these dangers by turning off your Wi-Fi when you go to bed. Take your phone out of your pocket and keep it in airplane mode as much as possible. Get grounded and anchor your feet directly to the earth often. Now, even though Dr. Patel wasn't convinced that this was a super big concern. I think the FDA has looked at it. Multiple places across Europe have also looked at it and they haven't found anything consistent. I still wanted to play it safe. So while I sleep tonight, I'm gonna turn my phone to airplane mode and I'm gonna to sleep in the basement. This is pretty much as close to the earth as I can get because I'm pretty sure it's just concrete and then dirt and then worms and spiders. Doesn't get much more primal than that. As I set up my hard wooden bed on the cold floor, I couldn't help but think of my dog Sunday, who also sleeps on a hard surface on top of just one blanket. Does the liver king think that our ancient ancestors were we're dogs. Come to think of it, I've never seen my dog use a phone much either. Anyways, that's why I put on this wacky pillowcase. After putting my phone in airplane mode and anchoring myself to the earth for a little bit, and that should be pretty much good, I crawled into my nice warm bed for the best night of sleep I've ever had. Or so I thought. Uh. Yup, that's right, you just got pranked, baby. It was not a good night's sleep. All right, good morning, everybody. You may have noticed that I am not in uh, my basement anymore. Picture a toddler showing up in the doorway of his parents' room in the middle of the night because he just threw up. Uh, that's pretty much how I showed up at our bedroom door last night with two giant pieces of plywood. Because honestly, I didn't want to sleep in the basement anymore. All right, it was scary and lonely. Once Laura was done laughing at me, it probably took me like an hour to fall asleep, I'd say. I didn't sleep well at all. I tossed and turned all night. Maybe if I did this for weeks, eventually I would get used to it. But as of right now, the only positive that I can take away from this experience is that I have never been so excited to get out of bed. When my alarm rang and it was time for me to stop planking all night, I was absolutely stoked. So if you're someone who has trouble getting out of bed, then consider sleeping in a medieval torture device, dude. It honestly might help. Now that it was time to get up and start my very first day as a primal, I consulted this video on Liver King's morning routine. Most frequently asked question is, how does Liver King clean his beard and his mustache? I don't. I also don't use deodorant. I don't brush my teeth. 
and I don't wash my hair. So, uh, I'm gonna be starting my day by not doing any sort of hygiene care. I'm not gonna shower, I'm not gonna shave, and I'm not gonna shit. All right, fine. I will, I probably will shit, but I'm not gonna wipe. Since the Liver King basically doesn't have any morning routine, I decided to skip shaving today, which left me looking pretty primal, I gotta say. But enough wasting time looking at myself in the mirror. I've gotta go stand outside. Ancestral tenant number five, connect. This tenant basically says that the earth has some sort of electromagnetic charge that is really healthy for humans to absorb. And back in the day, our ancient ancestors were always walking around barefoot, so they were always charging up on that good good. We were always sort of suckling from Mother Earth with our feet. But since we're all walking around with shoes nowadays, we don't do that. It says just give it a shot for 10 minutes and see how you feel. So this sounds like it's gonna suck ass in all honesty. It's uh, about 35 degrees outside right now. There is snow on the ground. Lucky for me though, I can kind of kill two birds with one stone here because there's another tenant called cold. Comfort is not good for the organism. That's me, I'm the organism. This is why the sixth ancestral tenet is get cold. Something tells me he's not talking about getting absolutely iced out with some ancient jewels and gems. Although our ancestors did do that too, dude. Look at freaking pharaohs. All right, 10 minutes on the clock, uh, let's go. I think in general, we as a society are a lot cleaner in nature. So we tend to wear shoes and things like that to prevent tracking of dirt inside the home, bacteria, etc. But in a lot of other cultures, it's very, very common to be barefoot in nature. What a lot of people believe is that when you are grounded to the earth, you are more connected with it in nature. And so that kind of tends to help your whole being. But medically, we haven't seen a 100% correlation of any Sort. All right, uh, this part did not feel healthy. Not exactly sure what I'm supposed to be experiencing currently, but holy shit, it is cold. My feet were literally burning. Holy shit, this is awful. As I stood there, I couldn't help but think of my dog, Sunday, who also stands outside barefoot in the middle of winter. But while she'll stand out there for literal hours on end, I could only make it for four and a half minutes. Honestly, a little disappointed in myself. I thought I had a little bit more of our ancestors in me than that. Oh, now my feet are all dirty too, but I guess that's how they're supposed to be. All right, did I connect with the earth at all? Did I feel Feel calm. I mean, honestly, I like being outside. That that was nice. Especially in the winter time, I feel like sometimes I don't get enough sun. I don't get enough vitamin D. Don't get to feel the sun on my skin too often. So in that sense, I enjoyed myself. In any physical sense, it was honestly torture. And now I'm hungry. Ancestral tenant number two, eat. When I told him I was doing this video, His Highness the Liver King actually offered to send me 10 pounds of raw beef liver and bone marrow straight to my house free of charge. Super nice of him to do that. But after I gave him my address and a week went by, I started to worry that no food was coming at all and that I wouldn't be making a video about the Liver King because this was all some sort of elaborate simulated hunt and I'd just let him straight to me. But luckily the next day it showed up. So here's a little flashback of when I received it. All right, let's open this box. I'm so curious to see what this is even gonna look like. I have no concept of what 10 pounds of raw liver and bone marrow looks like. Okay, the odor is inoffensive so far. Food safe packaging does not really seem to go with like the Liver King's lifestyle. I thought he might be sending me this stuff and it would just come in some sort of like ancient garment that's been like passed down from generation to generation. So I am pleasantly surprised that it at least appears to be packaged in some sort of responsible way. Beef bone marrow. Oh no, dude, what? It's the liver! Ew! Oh, Jesus. As I looked over my mountain of beef liver, I couldn't help but think of my dog Sunday, who also eats beef liver every day. You guys are probably wondering whether eating raw beef liver is good for you or not, because that's what I was wondering. Am I gonna die? The liver in general has a really high amount of vitamin A. It literally has the amount that you need for a total day. If you are taking medication, you may not be able to really eat that much vitamin A in your diet. The other good thing about it is it has iron. So mm. iron is great for those people that are iron deficient, but most people that are iron deficient are also vegetarians and vegans. I don't think many of those people are really gonna be eating those foods. It's very high in cholesterol. You have higher risk of like bacterial infections. So you can get E. coli, you can get salmonella that way. Okay. So that's really the main concern is more of like a bacterial infection side of it. Right. I was actually pretty surprised that there are some health benefits to eating raw liver and it's not purely a ridiculously bad idea. It seemed like the only thing I really had to worry about was getting some kind of bacteria 
bacterial infection. But I mean, come on, that didn't really seem like a big issue. I mean, as long as everything was like properly refrigerated. I just finished putting away the, uh, all of the beef liver and stuff. And I noticed that the little bag that I took out of the box for, at the very start was a bag that says ice on it. Like it's supposed to have ice in it to keep everything cold and it's empty. There was never any ice in the box. I feel like stuff with, like this you're supposed to send with dry ice, right? Should I be concerned there was no ice in the box? Yeah, so I actually was pretty worried going into this, but you know what? I had a feeling that the liver king wouldn't let the prospect of a little bacteria scare him away from a good meal. And oh boy, did this meal look good, dude. Okay, yep, smells like raw meat, so that's good. This meal looked like a feast fit for a king. Too bad it was the liver king and not like a real king. Uh, okay, I think I got all of it out. And if you're wondering what it smells like, honestly, it kind of just smells like raw meat. Like if you can picture what like beef tastes like before you cook it, I mean, not tastes like. You guys can all picture what beef tastes like before you cook it, right? You guys are all monsters. The feeling of the beef liver in my hands while I was cutting it up was like nothing I've ever felt before. I don't know if you've ever seen like videos of scientists handling that like aerogel material. That's supposed to be like the lightest material known to man. That's what beef liver felt like. It felt like if I like inhaled too hard while I was cutting it up, a chunk of it would just like fly down my throat. Sorry if you're watching Liver King, I am washing my hands. I don't know if that's allowed. I don't want to be sticky for the rest of the day. I don't know if that's allowed. He DMs me. You forgot about the last tenant, dude. Stickiness. Our ancient ancestors were covered in grime and sticky juices. This particular recipe that the Liver King sent me is a dessert recipe. <gasps> Oh, fuck. Now I gotta clean my counters. I guess he's trying to ease me in with something sweet for my first time, which I very much appreciate. Basically, all I had to do was mix together some maple syrup. Oh no, dude, that's like nothing. Olive oil and salt, and I was ready to go. In his description, he had like a brand of salt to get. He said four grams of Redmond sea salt. Didn't really understand why he wanted me to go get a specific brand of sea salt. I was like, does this guy have some sort of like tie-in with Redmond, but the bag does say ancient kosher sea salt. So I'm guessing that's why. He probably saw it says ancient on there and he was like, oh, okay. Now I gotta eat it. I don't wanna do this at all. I didn't eat anything today. The foolish part of me thought that I was gonna be able to eat enough of this for it to be a meal. And we're going to the gym right after this. So it's honestly pretty important that I do eat a decent amount of this so that I don't like faint. But also not so much of this that I also faint. Ancestral tenet number eight, fight. I believe for us to really thrive, we have to possess a type of high courage to continue to fight for something meaningful, to foster an inner fire, to take real risks, and to continue to create ways to win. I'm like shaking. I feel like I'm gonna faint just looking at this right now. Look for opportunities that scare the shit out of yourself. In this way, we can honor the legacy of our ancestors and our biology so that we can enjoy the spoils of the modern world and express the best version of ourselves. And then, bon appetit. We have to possess a type of high courage to continue to fight for something meaningful. There was never any ice in the box. The liver in general has a really high amount of vitamin A. Oh. Oh. I mean, it kind of tastes like a really, really rare steak, which I guess makes sense. Like picture the flavor of like the reddest, pinkest part of a steak and that's kind of what it tastes like, but it's also cold. Like my body told me that was wrong. The second it entered my mouth, my body was like, get, get out of there, no, nope. but I'll try it again. And the odds of me throwing up this time are way higher. I had two more bites of beef liver before giving up completely. Oh, maybe I was giving up because the beef liver was so gross or maybe I was just so excited to get to the bone marrow. For bone marrow, I scoop it right out of the femur and put it right into my chops, meaning his mouth. It's rich, creamy, and delicious. Oh my God. It just tastes like blood. It just tastes like blood. What the fuck? Rich, creamy, and delicious. Just like you just hunted a man down and slit his throat. Oh, fuck, dude. It just tastes like blood. It's just blood. No more. I'm done with that. It's like coated my mouth. It's like on the roof of my mouth. It's in my teeth. I don't think I'll ever be the same. I think it's gonna be in my mouth forever, especially since I'm not allowed to brush my teeth. Ancestral tenet number three, move. What you do with your body is just as important as what you put into it. By maintaining a healthy level of movement, one develops a healthy approach to consumption where instincts become far more identifiable and beneficial. Just like the liver king would, when I arrived at the gym, I covered myself in as many weights as I could find and hobbled to the door. I did that shit without even crying. <laughs> so like I said, he sent me his own personal workout and I thought this was gonna be some like absolutely crazy shit. I thought I was gonna be doing like spear throwing, primal sprinting, 
weighted screaming. But the workout was honestly super tame. It was just like bench press, dumbbell press, kettlebell press. It was a lot of pressing. The owner of the gym, Nancy, she was super nice. She helped me a lot with my form. I can't get up there. Maybe I need to go lighter. <laughs> <laughs> she also mentioned that the Liver King's workout didn't make any sense because it was kind of just the same exercise over and over in different ways, which definitely made me feel better because that shit was pretty hard. Yeah, I definitely feel that in my back, man. No wonder this dude's got an insane back. He probably does it with even more weight, honestly. That's crazy. I absolutely smashed the rest of the workout and finished it off with a hand over hand sled pull. So I think what's gonna happen is I'm gonna stand on here and she's gonna pull me and that's the workout. All right, my day is winding down now. It is currently 5 p.m., which I guess is not usually when I start to wind my day down, but it feels about, uh, it feels right. It feels like I need to wind my day down now. I chose to spend the last part of my day just kind of sitting here, because that's what the Liver King says he does a lot of times. If you remember in his house tour video, he says there's like a quiet hallway in his house where nobody can see him and he just sits and reflects on his day. It's kind of nice, honestly. I don't really feel like I spend a lot of time just like sitting alone with my thoughts and thinking. Overall, I gotta say I'm coming away from this with a, a, a bit of a different perspective on the Liver King. I kind of just thought he was a total goofball when I made the video about him, but I can understand Stand now where he's coming from with a lot of this health stuff, especially after talking to Dr. Patel. Turns out beef liver actually is healthy. Will I eat, ever eat it again? No, but I'm so tired right now. I'm really, I'm really quite sleepy. I did not sleep well last night. So I think right now what I really wanna do is go to sleep. So I'm gonna I'll probably end the video right here. Um, thank you for watching. I'm gonna go to sleep. I am really excited to go to sleep. Wait, stop. Before the video ends, there's something I have to tell you. The internet might not be as safe as we thought. Yeah, that's right, guys. Maybe the Liver King was right after all, and we do need to be more careful about how we use the internet, but not in the way the Liver King might think. Because did you know that big corporations can see and sell like pretty much everything you do online? I'm talking your internet service provider, advertisers. There's one company that controls like 90% of internet searches. They might control your email. They might manufacture your phone and they might even own the video streaming service that you are using right now. And that is why I use today's sponsor, ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN masks your IP address and replaces it with one of their own, making it way more difficult for corporations to trace your activity back to you. I have ExpressVPN on every device that I can have it on. I've got it on my laptop and I've got it on my phone. And I really appreciate the fact that it doesn't slow my internet down. I don't ever notice like a, a significant decrease in speed when I'm using ExpressVPN. And if you want to find out how you can get three months for free, then head on over to expressvpn.com slash Danny Gonzalez. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash Danny Gonzalez. Thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. They've been a longtime sponsor of the channel and I appreciate them very much. And thank you to you guys for checking out ExpressVPN. <music>